We've got an energy alert. Crude oil hitting $93 a barrel today. That is the highest level in eight years. As WTI marches toward 100 bucks, the chart master says it is time to sell. Let's get to Carter Worth of Worth Charting. Carter, what are you looking at? Sure. I've only got two charts, but before we get to them, everyone knows that the sort of the story or the headlines are all very bullish, right? Inventories are waning and spare capacity is dwindling and post-COVID demand is surging and supply outages in Libya and Nigeria. Everyone knows there's geopolitical risk and everyone knows we're in backwardization. But today's note at 9 a.m. was simply the reciprocal of a note from eight weeks ago. And so let's look at the charts and try to figure it out together. The first chart is, and, and it's really quite fascinating, right? I mean, I don't draw the charts, the charts draw themselves. When we were at the bottom of that um, formation, you can call it a, a fan, if you will, um, a widening wedge, it, w the case was, hey, we're overdone at 63. That was the first week in December. So today's note at 9 a.m. was, it's the reciprocal. We're now to the penny at the top of the formation. We're up 50%, and all of the stories are bullish now. And, and, they're, and without something really geopolitical or exceptional, I think this is where you fade it. And so, uh, the simple note was, just as it was uh, maybe right, lucky, or a little bit of good timing to buy at 63 here at 93, let's do some selling. Um, one final chart of the two. This is a ratio chart. Now we're looking at WTI, relative performance to the CRB Raw Industrials Commodity Index. So you're picking up here iron ore, copper, steel, lead, rubber, zinc. And that ratio, the relative performance, that was the peak there in 08. We know that crude oil hit $147 a barrel. And every time it has gotten to this downtrend line since, it has failed. We're, we're pretty close to that line now. So the thinking is uh, take some money off the table if you're long. And I'd go short here with a bit of money. Is the extrapolation of this, Carter, that you would short uh, oil equities as well? Well, oil equities, uh, let's see, they're, they're such a disparate group. For starters, if you take Exxon, Exxon is now trading at present higher above its 150 day moving average at any point in the history of the data. Now, to be fair, the data only goes back to the early 80s. Who knows what energy's chart looked like in the 73, 74 sort of oil spike and OPEC. But um, my thinking is that a little trimming in equities, but it's more about crude. Crude is far ahead of the equity complex. All right, Carter, thanks. We'll see you on Options Action in a few minutes. Carter Braxton Worth. Nadine, you've got uh, oil equities. Are you trimming here? We have been starting trimming. I wouldn't go as far as shorting at this point. I do worry about geopolitical risks that could, especially for those that are either playing against a benchmark, we do have some long onlys that we manage. Um, and also, when you have positions with low cost basis, you have to worry about taxes. So maybe you would hedge a long position if you don't want to trim it. But I wouldn't go out and just short it right now just because of that open the envelope risk. Yeah, um, let's be clear just for viewers' sake. Um, Carter was saying to short oil itself, the commodity, as opposed to sure. equities. Um, Steve Grasso, where do you stand on oil equities? Yeah, so I, I'm more I'm more in uh, Nadine's camp. I would not short the commodity e either. I, I think that he he nailed it for all the reasons. Uh, they're all correct. The problem is not only is there geopolitical risk, there's political risk. If President Biden can't figure out how to lower the cost of energy between now and the midterms, it's going to be an incredible loss for the Democrats. So I think you're going to see him do something that's going to bring in the price of oil rather quickly. All right, we've got some uh, a news alert here on Peloton. Shares are rocketing in the after hour session now at more than 20%. Let's get to Seema Modi. Seema. Hey, Melissa, here's the story. Dow Jones is reporting that Peloton has drawn interest from, uh, fit, the fitness company has drawn interest from potential suitors, including Amazon, and that the company, Amazon, is speaking to advisors about a potential deal uh, for Peloton. In addition to that, uh, Dow Jones is reporting that Peloton is facing pressure from activist investor to replace its CEO. That does follow a report from the Wall Street Journal that uh, touched on this very fact. You can see Peloton is spiking here, rebounding after what has been a tumultuous run for the company. Melissa, we reached out to the company. More to come. Back to you.
All right, Seema, thanks. Seema Modi up 26 percent right now. Bono, and I got to say, it kind of makes sense. I mean, you can use you can use the Prime Video as, as a distribution platform for the right. software, which it's trying to become software company. You can use the delivery network to deliver the hardware, the bikes and stuff. I mean, it makes a ton of sense. And they've ratcheted up distribution centers throughout COVID. I mean, my question is, what isn't Amazon going to be involved in? Um, so I, I definitely am not willing to bet against them being able to make it work. They've done it too many times. Yeah. I, I mean, Pete, imagine you could say, Alexa, give me, a, you know, HIIT ride or something. Exercise I mean, for me. <laughs> right. Well, <laughs> not quite that. I, mean, I wish maybe that's to come. Um, but up 28 percent right now, Pete, can you see this? I do. Uh, you know, Mel, it's something that I've, I've been critical of this company for a really long time, especially when it was up in the upper 100s, up $150, $160. It's pulled back, and a lot of people have speculated there's got to be a buyer out there at some point, and that's probably not so stupid. People have put out there Apple. I, I've heard Amazon. I've heard other names. But if Amazon really were to, to take over this company, I'm sure there would be a lot of changes, but it would fit the business model very well. I think it, I, it would make a lot of sense. And at these levels, they probably can make it work, Mel. I'm not sure as a standalone that Peloton can make it work. All right. Uh, Peloton shares up 31 percent right now. We've got much more coming your way. But first, as we head out, a message from CNBC contributor David Henderson as CNBC celebrates black history. My wife and I had our house appraised twice last year so we could sell it. And the second time, it appraised almost $50,000 higher than it did the first time. What changed? The first time we were home, the second time we made sure that we weren't, and we took down all the pictures of ourselves and our family. One of the most important things you can do to improve the financial future for the black community is recognize that discrimination like this occurs because you can't fix what you won't acknowledge.